Far too long you have stumbled in darkness searching for light. We have a man in our midst who can bring forth truth back beyond doubt, that can open the eyes and ears of those lost in darkness. As Saeed El Imam Isa al Hadi is that man, and the author of over 150 books of a religious and scientific nature. As Saeed El Imam Isa al Hadi Mahdi has brought forth this information straight from the scripture, so it cannot be denied. So we invite you to listen, to learn from the true light featuring As Saeed El Imam Isa al Hadi Mahdi. Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it? And that He is alone and has no part? And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of His prophets and His apostles and on the Messiah, the anointed one, and on the Mahdi, the God, and on the Mujadda, the reformer, which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You are now listening to The True Light with As Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi Al Mahdi. Okay, could you answer the question about the uh, gospel bondage, please? With uh, chapter 25, verse 3 to 7. Does this parable relate to the manner in which the Muslims should live? And also, does it, what is the literal meaning? Okay, it's speaking, first of all, if we listen to it, we find out who it's speaking to. It was speaking to David, right? And David was one of the kings of Israel, correct? Yes. And the kings of Israel governed the law over the tribes of Israel, of which Jesus said he was from, correct? Of the house of David. Yes. So now, who does this sound like it applies to? Muslims or Christians and Jews? Well, you see, if you, I don't uh -huh. understand the question because if Jesus is supposed to be a Muslim, how can it apply to Christians? Okay, because Jesus came after Moses, after David and them to correct the mistakes that they were making. That's what he said. I come not to change, but to confirm, to fulfill. So what was being admitted by Isa and Maryam at the time, alayhi salatu wasalam, which was Jesus, the son of Mary, is that the people before him had started making errors, had started over-exaggerating the law. That's what he came to teach, correct? And he came to correct that. And Barnabas and them were teaching his teachings. You follow that? And they were saying that people must be held by a range. You must control people. Horses are kept within inside a certain perimeter. You don't let them run wild. He was saying that people must be controlled because there was an ark of the tabernacle set up for the twelve tribes of Israel in Exodus where you see all the tribes had to live together and drink from, from separate fountains and that they were told not to cover thy neighbor's wife, not to mix with people outside, don't mix your blood, that they had certain laws and commandments that they would live by. That is what they're describing, the laws, the, the, the discipline that's necessary in any religious community. But no, this was not talking about the sons and daughters of Islam. This was talking about prior to Al-Islam in the time of Daud on up to Jesus where he had come to correct those extremities that these people had enforced upon the children of Israel that was making them go astray. Do you understand? Okay, thank you. Okay, this is my last question. Um, the Gospel of the is a script that precedes every verse. Okay, what does that mean? What we do, as, a, as opposed to Jehovah's Witnesses or a lot of other Muslims or Christians, and they just take the scripture and throw it at you. And you have no way of checking the words or the translation in hopes that, inshallah, one day you all will be speaking your language again. You're able to look up above the English at the Arabic and read it and see that it says the same thing. This is a way of us showing people how a lot of Arabs come into this country or Arabic-speaking people and misguide because they say things like Allah, then they say God. And Allah is not God, it's two different things. And then they say, um, uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
in the name of God, the most gracious, the most compassionate. And that's not what it translates. Literally, it doesn't translate that. So what we do is we try to be as literal as possible in our translation for what it says regardless of how people feel because people are entitled to know Al-Haqq min Allah Ta'ala. The facts beyond any doubt from Allah and not interpretations of men. That is why people are confused because they keep getting human beings' interpretations and not quotes. If you read our book, you see that after everything we say, we put a quote to back it. We go to the Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Sohufin, everything to back it by scripture. Most Muslims, if you read their literature, everything is backed by Hadith, 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 Hadith. Hadith will not get you into Jannah. Hadith can get you into Jahannam, meaning Hadith cannot get you into paradise, but it can surely get you into hell. But if you read this Quran, this Quran, min Allah ta'ala, an nur al ard the light of the heavens and the earth is the Quran. If you live by it, you will make paradise. You cannot live by Bukhari and Shafi and Hamli and Maliki because they were not sent from Allah. They were companions or friends or associates or people informed by people who was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they were not from Allah. So hadith is not divinely inspired like the Quran is. And to match hadith with Quran is sin, is a sin, a great sin. In the name of Allah, the most merciful and compassionate, and by the will of Allah, I'd like to ask. You said that God, Allah is not God, right? The Quran says Allah, and the Bible says God, so now I am... Okay, let, let me explain. If you read an English translation of the Quran by Yusuf Ali, okay, he says God too. You understand? The point is that Muslims are being exposed when you get these Qurans from Pakistan, they have Arabic on one side and English on the other. But whenever you get a Bible, you don't get it with Arabic on one side and English on the other. Where they are available also. And if you read the Bible in Arabic, you'd see that they use Allah. They don't use God. And we as Muslims know that when Allah says, Huwa allazi la ilaha illa huwa, He's trying to enforce a statement. Allah, la ilaha illa huwa, the Quran says, Ayat Kursi. أشهد أن لا إله إلا هو هو الذي لا إله إلا هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام. He's trying to enforce something for us. He's trying to tell us his name is Allah. When we even say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم, what we're really saying is بإسمه by way of the name Allah, who is الرحمن الرحيم. But they translate it in the name of Allah instead of Ba ismi, not fi ismi, not ma ismi, not anda ismi, but ba ismi. By way, in, law, in the Arabic language, for instance, if you take the word qalam, pen, and you're going to make the statement that I write with the pen, the word for with in the sense of uh, using is be. At bil qalam. I write by way of a pen. I don't never say Ektab ma kalam. Ma is to accompany someone. Ali, who ma Rasulullah. Ali, he's with the Apostle of Allah. Anda, anda is possession of. If I said Andi, Andi Burdaga, I have an orange with me. You follow? But in the language of Arabic, we use the Beh with a Kesra to say by way of something. Ana Ektab, I write. Bil kalam with the with the pen using this pen. So when Allah subhanahu wa taala chose this for the tasmiya, Bismillah, He was trying to say by way of the name Allah, do you understand His attributes? Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Malik, Al Qudus, Al Salam, Al Mu'minu, Al Muhammad, etc., etc. What happens to us here in America is you're being exposed to people who are translators. From word to word, they're not translated for meaning. They don't know the essence of the Arabic language. So they say, Allah means God. Rahman means merciful. Rahim means compassionate. And they go on. They say, Bab means door. They say, uh, Hijab means veil. Etc, etc, etc. And this is not true. These are not translations by meaning. These are word comparisons. They're starting to compare words. Allah. Allah is alone. No partners has He. Allah wahtahu la sharika lahu. You follow what I'm saying? No partners has he. In Surah Al-Ikhlas of the Quran, Allah has given us a very serious lesson. When he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, 
Kul. He's talking to somebody here when he says Kul. He's saying Kul. Now, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to? He's talking to Muhammad Rasulullah. Because he's ordering him. Because Kul is the order tense of to proclaim or to make a statement or to say this. Kul Muhammad. Hu Allahu. Kul. Hu Allahu. This is what Muslims overlook. That's a very important statement. Kul hu Allahu. Before we even say Ahad. Just to get past that. Kul huwa. Say Muhammad. The huwa. The huwa. Is the same. The mystical name. The hundredth attribute of Allah. Which Ben Israel misused. Which is when they said Yahuwah. Which later became known as Jehovah. Yah is a, is a prefix on all Arabic pronouns or descriptive nouns where you say Ya Ali, Ya Fatima, Ya Muhammad you call out like that in Arabic or Hebrew so when Israel was saying Ya Hua which later got mistranslated to Jehovah they was really referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but did not want to misuse his name in the presence of the Kafirun those people who would, who would blaspheme Allah's name so they would just say Hua, Hua, He, He sent me, He is who He is so Musa Alayhi salatu wasalam asked Allah Ta'ala on the mountain of Thor. He said, Who should I say is sending me? Who should I say when they say send Arsala? Who has made me an apostle is what he really said. Send Rasul. Who should I say is made me this apostle? So that they believe me. He said, I am who I am. You see that? Huwa again. Allah thee. Huwa. I am who I am. Okay. So it is very important that we Muslims, we are Mu'minu wa Mu'minati. We must go out and tell the world that shaitan is the one trying to make us think that Allah is God. God is attributed to too many low life things in the language that it comes out of. It is wrong for us to call Allah the Lord. Allah is not the Lord. Allah is Rabbil Alameen. The word Rabb comes from the word to sustain, to take care of. Like a housewife is called Rabbat Manzal, one who takes care of the resident in Arabic. Allah is Rabbil Alameen, who takes care of all living things. To call Allah a Lord, we have a problem when we get to England, the UK, where people, where men are called Lords. We have a problem when it comes down to paying the rent <laughs> in America to a landlord. Your father, it is very important that Muslims be this intricate. That we go into the depth of it for the sake of the children. Because when you bring Al Islam into another language, this is where you have the problem. Because the meanings in one language are different than the, than the language of Lord Al Arabiya, which the Quran was sent down to us in. It is two different languages. So it's very, very important when you're teaching that language that you differentiate the meanings of words. So when you teach your children concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say one of his attributes is khalaq, al khaliqu the creator because there is no real translation of Allah Allah is who he is Allah huwa alladhi la ilaha illa huwa there is no translation you say Allah means the creator you see you always use one of his attributes as a translation Allah means the compassionate Allah means the yielder what does Allah mean? Allah means look al the lillah the source of all things that exist but he is not God because God can be made feminine and Allah cannot be made feminine. There's goddess in English. God, goddess, but Allah cannot be made into a feminine gender as a word. Though the Meccans tried and called it a lot. Ali and Bilal tore those statues down when the, when the Ansar Allah returned from Medina to Nur back to Mecca and reestablished Deen al-Islam in the sacred city of Ibrahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's real important that you understand that in the English Quran that they have in America, they have God. So the Bible, you will find the bad translation. This is why we spend so much time in our books translating things for people so that they can see it.